Nine tablespoons of flaxseed potentially contains enough cyanide to cause death. And then we get on to soy products, endocrine disruptors, phytoestrogens, soy milk, for example. Now, these are digestive inhibitors. These flavonoids, again, flavonoids are a type of polyphenol. They cause many, many issues in the body. They're not only digestive inhibitors. They, they block the absorption of vitamin C. They're endocrine disruptors. So they cause infertility in men and women. Low, low sperm count, they activate the 17B estradiol receptor. This leads to hyperthyroidism in women, gynecomastia in men. Again, more endocrine disruption in regards to estrogen and COMT. Inflammation, the flavonoids will activate interleukin-1, 6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. This is what we find in these compounds, such as kale. And these are found in things like soy, onions, and in the skin of berries, as anthocyanin. These compounds are... I believe not beneficial long-term. I believe that they may confer a benefit. And the reason that a polyphenol is beneficial in the early stages, so I think if you're new to this journey, these compounds are beneficial because of reactive oxygen species. So polyphenol, many phenols, they're polyphenolic in structure. They, don't, they have no place in human biochemistry in a healthy individual. But when reactive oxygen species is elevated, we use the hydrogen atoms from the polyphenol, and this helps... This helps reduce the reactive oxygen species, but we need reactive oxygen species. This is created through the electron transport chain, and it's there for many, many reasons. Um, it's important for signal. We do need reactive oxygen species. The issue is when you are carnivore and your reactive oxygen species is low, we don't want to consume additional hydrogen atoms because this can lead to something called reductive stress, the opposite to oxidative stress. So as we gravitate deeper into the journey, these polyphenols and plant compounds become increasingly more problematic. Flaxseed. I used to add this to my spinach and kale turmeric smoothie with black pepper. How many of you guys have done this? I'm sure more of you have done There's more than three. We've all consumed... How many of you have consumed turmeric? Black pepper. The black pepper blocks phase two detoxification in the liver. Did you know that? So it doesn't increase the efficacy of the turmeric. It prevents your body from detoxing a toxin. I don't consume pepper because of the piperine. These compounds are incredibly problematic. I used to add the flaxseed. Flaxseed is very high in hydrocyanic acid, cyanide. Now, this isn't a, an old age thing. This still, these things still happen. People die from cyanide poisoning. In 2017, two people of 98 died from cyanide poisoning from consuming cassava root. So this, this still happens today. What this study shows is the, the lower or to upper limit of the amount of cyanide that we would need to consume to cause death, and it's estimated between 0.5 to 3.5 milligrams per kilogram. So for somebody weighing 70 kilograms, this is as little as 35 milligrams. And it is on the lower end, but it's still possible. And what the study shows is that the more we consume it, the more often we consume it, the higher the toxicity from the cyanide. Now, if we look at 100 grams of raw flaxseed, the amount of cyanide found within is between 15 to 40 milligrams of hydrocyanic acid. So this is a kilogram pack of flaxseed. So if we work this on the lower end of the 15 milligrams, this is how much flaxseed ground and consumed could potentially cause death. What happens if we go to the higher end? Nine, nine tablespoons. Nine tablespoons of flaxseed potentially contains enough cyanide to cause death. And I think we're breaking, we're breaking hearts today. I was a big lover of, of flaxseed. I no longer consume flaxseed. The other issue that we find with these nuts and seeds is that the compounds they contain are not beneficial. They can lead to a condition called cytosterolemia. Well, cytosterolemia, in fact, is a genetically inherited condition. But what it shows is that the body's inability to deal with the fatty substances from nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds don't contain omega-3s, by the way. So if you're consuming these nuts and seeds for omega-3s, your nuts and seeds contain ALA. The human body needs EPA and DHA. That conversion in most studies is zero. So you're not going to obtain an awful lot of your omega-3s from the nuts and seeds. But these phytosterols, plant sterols, plant sterols, the body tries to excrete them. And in a healthy individual, it excretes it down to the point of 2%. In somebody with cytosterolemia, they can't detox. This leads to overload and it leads 
increasing chance of heart attack, stroke, and sudden death. This is what's found in your sunflower oil, safflower oil, your vegetable oil, which we'll get into as we go. Apple seeds, amygdalin. Apple seeds also contain cyanide. Now, when I was on my juicing health kick, I would add two or three apples to my smoothie. But I would put the whole apple in. I'd add the core. I would add the core. How many apple seeds does it take to cause death? Based on 35 milligrams, as little as 58 apple seeds. So this basically gives us 6 to 14 apples. Now, we're unlikely to, to consume this volume, but again, would you consume that rat poison? Now, the interesting thing with this is most of us in this room could probably cope with this. The body has the ability to detox. But when I was on my health kick, I would make these smoothies and I'd give them to my little girl. So it may not be causing me issues. Something that we think is healthy. What damage is that causing to our children? And that's what scares me.